and here we go I'm doing a, a special edition dork table hmm. to type all this stuff in I already did type it in but when I went live it erased it so we're gonna start out with a, a little stall and I'll read to you the dork table <laughs> um, special and then today's date and then we'll get on with this crazy thing and see what I have in store for the dorks today um, I thought I'd go with um, just talking about what's been going on here in Denmark lately compared to you know what's going on wherever you're at lately and uh, I'm having a good time I hope everybody else is but doesn't seem that way sometimes okay I think I got the date thing sorted out I think I'm live and uh, Grimner will tell me oh, okay I didn't have my volume up or nothing huh how's that am I live can you hear my dork voice on the airwaves now anyway yeah okay Rob works said there I am so he hears, ah, okay, we got Miss Kate checking in too. Uh, I'll say hello to the RLM, and I do this mostly for the RLM. And, um, well, I found out we got a little crowd over at Spreaker that picked up the, uh, the dork table Saturday I did by myself. It was kind of a surprise. Uh, I'm so used to work, you know, doing this radio thing with Mary or Vince and or Moose or Grimner, whoever's, you know, Whoever else is there is always somebody there. So doing it alone is a little different. It seems I got a better response than I expected. So my wife said, well, I got an early morning tomorrow. And well, why don't you do a dork table? And I thought, hmm, I guess I could give that a shot. And I was listening to um, Freaker's Ball. And Moose was talking about how they've been on the radio for so long and they've said the same thing so much, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, yeah, well, I understand that, but positive reinforcement. Oh, thanks, Rob. Um, positive reinforcement is kind of nice to get when you stick your nose out and do this radio shit. I don't know why. It's kind of personal, I think. It, it's not as easy to do for some people as others. But the doing it by myself, that, that's, that's a little bit different. Anyway, so what's been going on here? Cirque had a couple of weeks off work for vacation time. And we're so pleased with this little house in the country here that she just wanted to stay home and sit in the yard and vegetate and do knitting and things like that and recover from her fingers still. So the weather decides to jump a little hotter than we're used to here during this time of year anyway so it was very hot and it was a good excuse to uh, stretch out my getting the grocery thing and have a couple beers and, and talk to a few people and I was surprised that uh, it has gone so well and Sunday I went back and the things that I see in this bar I, I told Cirque I had to take a picture of this because I didn't expect her to believe the story I'm about to tell you. There's a couple. They've been coming to this bar. They know the owner, blah, blah, blah. And they have a dog. It's about 10 or 12 inches long. It's a little tiny female. Um, and it probably weighs maybe between a half a pound and a pound. Because I picked her up. They, you know, The dog is in the bar while we're drinking. And she runs around and on the leash and does whatever she pleases. Well, I got the I got the couple to let let me take a picture of them holding the dog, so that I could show Cirque because it so it was so strange to me to go to a bar and you know and in this time in life where everybody's afraid of you know germs and cigarette smoke and all this kind of crap in a bar, I figured maybe a dog would be like. The last thing, you because know, what if the dog shit on the floor or something stupid like that? But it's an eight-year-old dog. The dog knows, you know, dogs are trainable. You can train them to do any anything if you take the time to do it. And so there's <laughs> there's a little dog in this. Anyway, I, I'm, 
they do this on Sunday, so it's it's a regular thing, because I managed to go in there on two Sundays and see them. And that's not, you know, that's as exciting as uh, I think I want life to get over here. When uh, when I go out and have a beer, just chitter chatter about nothing in particular, the weather. Um, the, but then sometimes we get into politics and and uh, history yeah, changes things, but. Nobody gets upset about the disagreements. The I don't know if it's the culture or just this one particular place. I've just managed to find where, um, I, you know, they say water seeks its own level. Hmm. So somehow or another, I'm just running into people that already think like me and Cirque do in the first place. And they lived here, you know, their life, their whole life, some of them. Well, most of them. It's not like a place where people would move to it's a place people would move from to go to the city so living here is uh, it's, I don't know it's got a peaceful kind of quiet exterior and then <laughs> there's this underlying I don't know whatever runs it isn't it's not typical government and physical police enforcement it's a little different I think their community is a lot tighter. People known each other forever, so it's easier to manage this. Uh, okay, Rob, I'll answer that. That gives me something to talk about, so glad you're asking something. Uh, actually, there's a law that bans the smoking inside the bar, but they take up a collection, and if they get hit with a fine, they just pay the fine, and long live the queen. So, yeah, well, what they compromised, they have a, a an area with a pool table. It's that, uh, it's not a pool table, but it's got pockets, but it's more that uh, pin game. I put up a link about it the other day because I'd never played it before until Sunday. Ah, that was the other thing that happened, but anyway, yeah, they let you smoke in the bar, and if, if they get hit with a fine, they just take up a collection from the people that smoke, and that's that that's that but in Copenhagen it was a lot different too many people it was too crowded so smoking inside was you're gonna put your smoke out in somebody's butt it was dangerous I wouldn't do it it's like being in an elevator with a lot of people a lot of the time so I don't even smoke but believe business owner should decide, not some idiot liberal. Well, I like the way you think there, Mr. Woody, but you got to realize politicians are working both sides of the coin. So they make money off every little uh, scam they can come up with. You know, if there's money to, to make, they'll ban it. And that's <laughs> banning things is it's like the cornerstone of our uh, failure as a society is all this banning shit but when they thought of it it was a good man it was a good scam at the time it came, i think it came from when when they banned hemp so they could use oil and all these other bullshit synthetics that were useless and didn't have a life to them they knew what they were doing and i think they they made the plastic as breakable as they could legally make it so that things need to be replaced as often as you need them <laughs> yeah the minute you need something it's broken and you have to go get another one that kind of need them anyway just like a republicard can't just fuck up your own lungs gotta fuck somebody else's too wow okay wow that <laughs> You ever been near a bus, little missy? <laughs> Talk about smoke. Mm. Mm. Then to top it off, what's legal to put in the air for you to breathe and the water for you to drink is way more dangerous than the little shit they put in a cigarette. But, see, we're all taught these illusions to follow and, and jump to. and I'm on this side and I'm on that side. And, um... I don't know. It's just gotten out of control. There's there's too much to know about too many things that are too complicated 
to really be understood in a simple fucking way. So we're we're held hostage by the illusion of, of looking for answers. Oh, I'm going to solve this. And oh, I'm going to solve... Oh, Chloe's going to live forever because she doesn't smoke. You know, that, I don't know. Some people... Um, I find, you're going to laugh at this one, Miss Chloe, I find the smell of cauliflower nauseating. <clears throat> cauliflower and me are not good friends. Or Brussels sprouts. Now, it's kind of embarrassing when somebody's cooking those two particular vegetables and I can't be within 20 feet of them because if I smell them, I'm going to Ralph. <laughs> Now I don't I don't know why, but there you have that. Now that's just as bad as somebody smoking a cigarette, in a way. But it's nobody's going to ever make a ban against cooking cauliflower because some Mexican Jew guy might throw up in it. So you know, <laughs> we we have good times, we have bad times in this life. <laughs> Uh, good, wait, 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 liberals go along with all about the children. Oh yeah, uh, what is it, fluoride. Fluoride's good for your teeth, they said. If you know what fluoride is, it's it's not good for your teeth. You know what else? It's not good for your third eye either, if you know what that is. But if you don't know what that is, don't worry, you probably don't have one. <laughs> I'm just joking around. So, there's a, a Danish guy, and his English was very bad, and my Danish is even worse, but he was very insistent that I shoot this game of pool with him, and he was very clear he, he, we weren't going to gamble, he managed to get that out in English, and he does, wasn't trying to gamble with me, he just wanted me to play the game with him, learn how to play it. And apparently what happened was I've been playing eight ball and nine ball since I was like 12. <laughs> and my my nine ball and eight ball game isn't necessarily um, how you play this game, but it helped me figure out what to do quickly. And, and I beat the guy twice out of four games. So the bartender said he wasn't too happy about that part of it. He expected to beat me every time, but he didn't. So... Now I'm a, I'm a ruthless competitor on the pool table after my first day. So when I go back, I have something you know more interesting to do than just talk about the moon landing. Maybe I'll become a pool g hustler here. <laughs> I doubt that. Go, go down there once or twice a month and play like two or three games of pool. <coughs> See, Rob Works knows what um, fluoride does to your third eye. And people need to be more, you know, you're educated about things that are complete and total nonsense. I mean, absolutely nothing. Even if they're correct. To me, they just eat up brain space that you could actually have some knowledge that you could apply to something. But that doesn't interest too many people. Hmm. Oh, I don't know, Woody, how much the fine is for the, for the smoking, but, it, you know, whatever it would be, it couldn't be that big a deal because they just say, well, we just take up a collection and pay it. And it's probably very seldom that they ever bother with it. But, you know, every now and again, you can get somebody that'll complain. And if they complain enough, they'll be listened to. That's, uh, that's society. But they're, I don't know, they still allow it. They compromised. And, you know, well, not on Sunday. We're not going to let you ban us on Sunday. <laughs> just, you know, just a little nitpicky uh, protocols. And I guess they could come in there and find them if they want to anytime. It's more civilized here about, about money. I, I don't think that... Uh, there's not enough poverty here to, to drive people to only think of money, 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 money all the time. It's like a secondary thing here. You know, and most people got, um, what do you call them, the little plastic cards, you know, to go to the bank machine and do magic with the, uh, you know, I call it creative accounting. <laughs> and my wife liked that. She, she works in finance. 
Old Cirque. Cirque's a brainiac. It's one of those smart people that, you know, went to school and learned how to do something, you know, th for the system, so to speak. But she refuses to work for the state, but she does She does work in, uh, in the private sector. And there you go. Yeah, when when we first got together, the only requirement of me was, please don't take Cirque to America. <laughs> kind of shocked me at first, but, but uh, well, okay. You know, I went that far. I, we, we were just that, I don't know. It just worked. <laughs> so uh, my punishment now is, is uh, I'm... I'm in Denmark and can't go back to America unless I go alone. And I gotta admit, there's not really much going on the internet to make it attractive to go back to the States. Man, you guys gotta try harder. If you think you're great again, get your nose out of the book, man. Look around, something's not right. Somebody's telling you a story and you're believing it. And if you're not believing it, what are you doing to help it? You know, that's... Something that came to mind earlier was when I was a child, we had this TV show come on called All in the Family. I must have been 10 or 11 when that aired in America. And uh, Archie Bunker was um, proud of his president, even when his president was an idiot. But he was a, you know, he was a devout Republican and all that crap. But even when and Mr. Nixon did something stupid, Archie would still justify it somehow because, you know, he was a, a party man and he was for the party. Wow. And then now here we are, what, 40, how many years later is this? Uh, ooh, 48 years? Oh my goodness. I am getting older than Grimner. Holy. Anyway, so here we are. I don't want to come back here. Yeah, well, I I don't I don't want to leave Cirque. So you know, there you go with that. And she's only forty, so she'd be around a while. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know. Um, I don't know how I know it. I just feel it. I guess it's the uh, it's the warm embrace of the of the group that that gathers at the RLM, and I never said hi to everybody. Hold on, let me do this now. Wow, I'm like now I'm doing what Mar I, but Mary just done it in less than twenty. I I got seventeen on the clock. Let's see if I can do it in two. Hey, we have Barman Grimner. Hey, Grim, Moose Girl, Moose, Miss Kate, Phantom. Anti Asmo to a hey, Asmo's back again. Well, wow. maybe he's just logged on. Uh, we got Beth Z, Chalcedony, Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. Du Wait a minute. Okay, we got two Chloe's. Colfax 101. Oh, my favorite cyborg noodle. Hey, Pox. Uh, Don C is here. Dakota, Frumpy, Gooberzilla. Gramsy, hey Miss Mary, I be Doncy. Wait, a I thought plus D C was. Uh, whoops, I might have fucked that one up. Uh, hi D underscore C. I thought it was Don. Anyway, we got Java Doctor Two, J's Nines J's. We got one Taco Kozu, Woody. Hey Meister Brow, uh, Mum, Pox Box, Poxified, Pox Phone, Pox at Home, Pond Sauce. Rain, R L M fluke, uh, the fluke, mm -hmm. and, and Rob works. Hey, bubbler, uh, sock puppet, skittle. Hey, and Cirque changed my name to Sun Booty so I could use this uh, particular. Um, she's what is it even called? The Ice Chat nine point two one program to log into the RLM. I was having a lot of trouble with the other ones. The other sites were, I don't know, they were getting booty and picky and snooty and all that kind of shit. Anyway, so I had a, a thing, but I
closed it and shut it down somehow and like me with a computer I, I shut it up so it, it couldn't work no more but it had my real name my my real alias now I've been re-aliased and nobody knows exactly who I am yeah I, I was right about something hey score for me ding 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 usually I'm wrong so hey Don and uh Oh, there's more, though. Wait a minute. It's, uh, me and Trust Number One and Vinny the Poot is back home, and he's going to be, um, he's on, on the uh, computer again today. I seen him earlier. So he's back and he's settling down in um, redneck land so that, you know, he could fire up a bubbler and take his shoes off without insulting anyone for a while. I just read some things on the RLM chat that made me really, <coughs> what? <laughs> the children are playing in the RLM chat. Oh, yeah, and the Real Liberty Media chat is, I don't know, it's a good playground for people with bad attitudes, I suppose. You know, because I don't think um, politically any of us are particularly pleased on either side of this, I don't know, joint illusion that we play. <laughs> I, I still really find it hard to believe any of this crap is real, but and I don't know. If you read enough, I guess you can be, you could believe anything that you want to believe. You know? Just like I cannot believe anything I don't want to believe. So in my mind, it just makes it not true, but in your mind, I don't know. I guess it wouldn't really matter at that point. <laughs> a lot of people, they they seem to want to uh, discuss things beyond recognition. You know, let's pound it into a nice pile of of mush, and then we'll throw it at a wall and see what sticks. And I don't think that's how society should work. But all these you've been ruled to death i think and and now you're willing to just tolerate it because it's common and if you ever saw that movie seven about the seven deadly sins they had a serial killer and he's killing off everybody that was guilty of a sin and when they catch him he's they're driving him to the last kill and uh, and he goes off on this tangent about how common a sin is every street corner blah 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 people are so cheap and he's going to solve it by murdering them <laughs> I, I, I mean it's sad that i find the the movie entertaining i suppose on some level but there's so much there's so many ways to look at the damn film in the first place but the answer to violence with people nowadays is, hey, let's have some more violence. You know, now they can understand if if you have a bowl of soup and you put pepper in it, at some point in that soup, you're going to want to stop putting pepper in it because it's going to be unedible. But that's not the lesson they seem to learn in any area except with soup <laughs> this excess shit is it's our collective fucking failure I think that I gotta have this and 12 of those and, and <coughs> whoops hmm <coughs> That was fun, you know, and and live on a mountaintop and be looked up to and all this crap. I mean, I find it hard. Oh, here we go. I, I read the funniest damn thing on the Internet today. Are you sitting down? I mean, if you're not sitting down, I recommend you put your butt in a chair. This is huge. Nine faggots in West Hollywood decided that. <laughs> Donald Trump's star should be removed from the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And 
I grew up in L.A., right? And I've never heard anything so fucking ridiculous about that walk fame in my life until this. This is, you know, I mean, people, I grew up with it. It was just something that was there. It was historic. You know, all these famous uh, actors and movie people and whatnot. And they made this really fancy uh, walkway, you know, with the stone and their name and shit on it with a star. Anyway, some assholes decided to go and uh, um, vandalize Mr. Trump's little star on the Walk of Fame. And it gave the liberals another chance to be um, really mean to the Republicans. And just, I think it's kind of like a slap in the face, you know. Being as you can't control people, we're going to ban your star. <laughs> and that's what I mean. Prohibition thing is, it's, you. what freedom do you got left if it's nine guys go, we're going to ban that tomorrow. What are you going to do about it? Argue? <laughs> You'll be paying the fine. Just like we will here for smoking in the bar. Because government's got its finger up your butt. <laughs> It's got his finger up my butt, too. Just, I think they put a glove on the hand they use on me or something because I hardly notice it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's not as intrusive as all. We don't have those. Um, I guess maybe if I traveled again, I'd run into all that uh, uniforms and IDs and let me see who you are and all that kind of crap. But I don't know. Nobody here seems to give a shit. And... Uh, just show my passport if I had to, but no, there's no reason for it. The The lifestyle that um, I ended up in is the one I started in, where when I was a kid, ID, what the fuck do you want my ID for? I didn't, I didn't think I had an ID until I got a driver's license. But I do vaguely remember them having... Um, school identification cards or something but I didn't participate in school so you know whatever they wanted me to do it was the last thing they were going to ever get me to do <clears throat> it took me until I was about 13 years old to get that across to them they were stubborn those educating people you know <clears throat> but at, after some point they, they did finally give up and leave me alone and fortunately for me, because of the type of person I am, I could have adapted to school and gone professional and all that. But I think to succeed, I would have had to completely ignore conscience and be a downright, you know, just hardcore, greedy prick. And didn't seem to, it appealed to me until I was about 27 or 28. And then something happened in my life and... I, I uh, just changed and <laughs> nah I don't think so you know, I'm not uncomfortable with living you know fine financially I've always been able to find ways to to barter or trade more or less and stay out of the um, stay out of that financial loop and unfortunately they weren't, the, the talents that I used in life weren't the ones that they taught me in school. You know, the remember which president, you know, chopped down a tree and which one freed some slaves, which other one, which one got shot in the back of the head by a magic bullet, and but it was in the front of his head, but we told you it wasn't, and he, yeah, it's a big mess. Anyway. So all these things these people have told me over the years that just turned out to be complete and total bullshit. And, and here we are, right? And we have uh, the worst fucking medical system on the planet disguised as the best medical system on the planet. But if you look up any of this, uh, like rating systems, the medical system isn't it's not doing very well it's doing good financially because it's got you hostage and according to the the government they found a way to make you buy 
uh, medical insurance by law. Oh, law. Thanks, Obama. I mean, that was supposed to help people, but I don't see how forcing somebody to buy something can possibly help them. If you don't want something, you should, you know, where, where's the freedom in, in life anymore? I mean, they got me in Cirque with the house. So, you know, if we want to live like 21st century people, you know, with the modern day conveniences, we have to have a house. You can't do it in a park. So here we are. And I don't think it's, um, I don't know, they, they do things differently, you know, from one country to the next country. And uh, I think America has just been so uh, violent for so long that they don't recognize abuse when it happens. I think that society's been televised into thinking certain ideas are absolutely normal that are absolutely fucking not normal. And to believe that things that are normal are absolutely not fucking normal. So, hmm. And they pitch it as some form of freedom. You know, if you do this, you get to be yourself, your true self. And I think it's all a bunch of shit right from the minute they start, to <laughs> they start talking about it. Because, well... I don't think we need to have other people tell us what to do or how to do anything. I think we're taught that through school and you know, the education system, the religion, and then, of course, the society at large and, and all their wonderful rules and regulations. But the people that don't follow them are the people that write them. <laughs> well, at least if they don't follow them, they know the boundaries because they wrote them and they understand what the language means. So, here we are. Still fighting admiralty courts and such. <laughs> well, anyway, that's that's a whole nother problem. I was pausing for a sip of my tea. Ah, that was wonderful. Let's see. No soup. No soup for you. Oh, he's been watching television or something. Let's see. Normal is a setting on the dryer. Hmm. Well, I tend to enjoy defining words to suit myself as well as the majority rule, what they decide a word means, too. You know, there are just some things that are more or less left for interpretation. Because are you telling me that I don't have a right to look around me and see the world as abnormal or normal at any given time? I think I can decide for myself. I don't need your permission. But, <laughs> but we do it. I do it too. But I usually just pick on whoever's uh, the most negative that's the one I'll be drawn to. The the sniveling whiner that wants to complain about how bad things are. But we're going to be great when we get jobs back. Yeah, I heard all about how how great things are going to be. And then uh, I think Saturday I was watching the internet. And you guys got some fellas in Portland who don't care for one another. And they met in the streets on Saturday in Portland, Oregon, and faced off. And some people apparently punched other people in the face during the face-off. I don't know. I, I didn't watch any of it. But I read a little bit, something yesterday, I think, or the day before, Sunday. Hmm. Whatever day it was. I don't know. Could have been Monday. Uh, <clears throat> what's interesting going on in the world? right now at this moment would probably be the insufferable sucking up that the fucking people do to my people this this uh, Israel thing 
you know, I mean, crying out loud. It's a great story, and I understand sometimes, you know, for a minute here and there. I can sympathize and understand, yeah, I can see why you feel sorry for him, but, uh, you know, it, it's just like the uh, the old bar fight. The guy that they grab is the guy that got hit first almost every time. It's just like a law of nature that the mob sees the opposite of what happened. And when you ask them what happened, they all tell you this crazy shit that if you were in it, that's not what happened. <laughs> and we all know this. But still, watch links on, on the internet. And depending on the topic or the uh, information source or the, the outcome of it, we agree with it. And I'm just wondering, maybe all of it, see, maybe all of it's all bullshit and none of it matters at all. We just believe it does. So what I've done, and I get accused of, what do you call it? Um, not, I don't participate in, in society in a, in a legal, normal fashion, so to speak, you know, I don't carry ID and proof of this and proof of that I keep it where I can you know get it in an emergency I don't carry it around so I could lose it out in the street like some kind of adult right and in all the years uh, that I've been traveling the one thing that except at borders or on boats nobody ever asked for the ID I've never been I'm too old and gray now geez just the length of my hair tells you i'm over 21 <laughs> not my size <laughs> i'm still small but once you you hear the voice too not too many 15 year olds got a voice like this lucky me but i did see and i i was i think i was telling circ or somebody anyway that when i was really young i was probably 12 uh, I turned 13 after the summer's over, so I was just coming up on 13, and me and my mommy and daddy had a little disagreement, and I decided to split. I was not going to deal with whatever it is, and I took off and went, ended up, I made it all the way up north on I-5 to uh, Bellingham, Washington, just short of the Canada border, and uh, I, when I was up there, I met this couple hitchhiking, and they were going to go on a boat ride. So we went on this boat ride, and they go, hey, you ever ride, drive a boat? And I went, no. Well, you want to? So they let me drive the boat on the river. And then uh, whatever else happened after all that, I decided to go back home. So the plan was to go back home and, you know, tell my mom and dad, well, I guess I didn't mean it, and I'm you know, going to straighten up. Well, I didn't make it all the way home. And in fact, what happened really looked a lot worse than it really was. But so here I am, 12 years old. I'm going to hitchhike to LA from Washington. And I guess I was in Tacoma or some, some place with a T in it on Interstate 5. Tacoma, Washington. It sounds familiar. Anyway, I catch a ride with three adults that are going to San Francisco. And in, it's a pretty long trip. Yeah, I guess from uh, 20 hours, something like that, straight drive. So in the car, they're, uh, I'm, they're all passing around driving and, and I'm getting a little sleep. Well, I wake up and they'd stopped in San Francisco at a motel. So when they when they were paying for the room... I'm getting my backpack out of the trunk of the car, and all of a sudden, bunch of cops everywhere. Lots and lots of them. And here I am, all of 12 years old. And what happened is they uh, they had uh, paid for the room with a stolen credit card, and they had eight pounds of weed in the trunk of the car. And here I am, 12 years old, and my backpack was in the trunk of the car, so I was obviously with them. And they took me, too. If it wasn't for the backpack, I could have just walked away and, you know, left. But that's not how, you know, life didn't go that way. Anyway, that was my uh, my last trip.
trip running away from home as a juvenile and I hadn't even turned 13 but I gave it up after that I mean that was that was enough and what I think what really worried my parents the most was during the time I'm I'm doing these crazy hitchhiking things they had uh in the newspaper serial killers that are picking on hitchhikers and you know people that were walking or whatever have you but not people driving so it it had my mom kind of upset and it was enough to to get me to stop and and not be a a bonehead anymore but here we are now I, i guess i never had a fear of traveling i guess you could put it like that what channel you watching oh they're watching alien ufo orb hidden in the middle of a thunderstorm movies on the rlm you're welcome that was a commercial break but and i don't know something brought that brought that to mind i guess because uh, now i'm living here and it's very comfortable to be um left alone Maybe it's the age too, you know. If I was thirty years younger, I don't, I don't think I'd be physically doing what I'm doing. So everything fell into place like a, like a puzzle. <laughs> a puzzle. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Anyway, so I thought I'd do a, a just an off the wall dork table and see what came up. And there's a lot of uh, uncomfortable things that come to mind, like this where do you st- how do you introduce the idea properly is i guess the greed and it doesn't go in any particular country or any of that it's just the greed of the modern day mind you know how we're uh, we're convinced that we need stuff instead of that we want stuff it's really seriously seems to me that we're so plugged in that it, it's gotten beyond um, what you want and it's got what what you expect and I say that because when the guys start um, chattering on the RLM main feed about you know computer stuff and they, they got a important computer question and there's a specific answer or a link with a bunch of numbers and letters and shit in it uh, Wow See, that sort of stuff just, it knocks me down because I don't speak that particular language. But, just like here in Denmark, I know enough about how a computer works to make some sense of some of it. So, you know, enough to not be completely ignorant, but just in awe of this is another language all in its own, this computer stuff. And how I approach it will bring me the results you know so far I'm the only thing I'm not pleased with is Hansel and everybody else is yeah you have your moments I have my moments we say things but you know nobody sticks and pounds you know uh, there's not too much negative you know, well maybe how do I mean it how I mean it is like when something bad happens i don't see a lot of the people on the rlm come out and root for the hurricane you know (laughs) hey that tornado didn't kill enough people what the fuck kind of hurricane was that and that kind of behavior just uh and it gets my attention so hmm, at a at a real deep level i think because I guess I'm capable of being that mean if I want to, or I have been, and life took me to Cirque, and Cirque's nice, Cirque's not like me, Cirque is not a combative person, she's not very good at arguing either, (laughs) I mean, it's kind of pointless to to even, I don't know, um, I'm a very stubborn kind of guy. I just walk away from people when they're when they uh, start raising their tone to me. I don't want to hear it. Now, over the years, it's been considered both an act of weakness and an act of strength. So it's a matter of opinion, and 
I think what I learned to do uh, when I was in my 20s was to avoid the phys- avoid the physical confrontation. And the way it happened, uh, I was in an argument with a girl, and this third-party guy decided to, to take her side of the argument. And I was playing dominoes with two friends, and she was on the other side of the room at the bar. So we had this big distance and we weren't speaking. I had my back to the main door of the bar and Kurt comes running in the bar. I heard him behind me, but I couldn't move. And he pushed me from behind and, and uh, I caught my the corner of my eye on the, the, the corner of the fireplace and split my head open. <laughs> so Kurt runs off. I'm... S- rolling around on the floor i got blood coming out of my face so i i wiped it on my uh, girlfriend's forehead (laughs) and asked her if she was happy and went upstairs to clean it up and that that act taught me that you know the worst things happen when you fight with people so maybe fighting with people isn't such a good thing and it's not to say I haven't since, but it's toned down, you know, to uh, now I go out in public and disagree with somebody about something that they deeply believe in, and they're okay with it. They just, ah, you just see it your way, and oh, I see it my way. And that was what I was maybe not looking for, but um, that would have been the the thing I would have been looking for is to find that kind of comfortable easy going life where eh, if you don't agree they won't beat you up they just call you you know call you names in a foreign language i can live with that you know because my wife does it she says i tell her every now and again i go well you know how i feel about this round earth crap and she starts rolling her eyes because she's got the education and i th- <laughs> and i think but remember sweetie i don't buy the flat earth either <laughs> So now she really knows she has something to worry about because you're supposed to choose a side. If you don't pick a side, then what do you believe? Who cares? <laughs> what the fuck does it change the outcome of the thing? If I don't believe it's true, is it still true or not? <laughs> I don't see how it matters. <clears throat> it's like this. <clears throat> it's like the political thing. You know, I can I can take it to heart and be all concerned about it, but the way I really see it is, it doesn't matter who's holding the seat in that White House. It's this group of nasty old pricks that wear dark robes and pray around a dead skull. They're the ones making all these decisions. You know, or. Or they'll pass it off as Trump's advisors. Eh, same bullshit. Even if it's Trump's advisors, it ain't Trump. Nobody in this world is capable of making the decisions that these people claim they make. And just because you squiggle your signature down on a document, well, that's your contract. It ain't my contract. But they've got everybody convinced that well, we're all bonded and tied by these documents. <laughs> I got, I got my American passport to, you know, to prove that I'm an American. Whoopie dippy. Well, it's kind of good, and then on the other hand, it's I'm kind of bored of it. You know, there's no struggle. You just show them that, and that's the end of the conversation. Boom, go on your way. So, t- but. People wonder, well, how come you can stay away from America for so long? And it's because these other countries, they treat me like um, I belong where I'm at. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, Maybe it's just luck. Who who is to know how how things are working? You know why something works out for you the way it works? It just does call it um some people were talking about the the other day karma i don't i don't know if i buy that karma crap because i mean look at uh tesla tesla died 
broke basically broke in a, a hotel room uh and very little human contact he was not a fan of people but john d rockefeller lived to be about 150 he well he looked it anyway and uh he left a wake of death behind him that's not even believable people are basically in the dark about the rockefeller medicine scam and the straw man and the admiralty court and all that could they got all this other shit to think about and it's all tied together you know like i was reading the other day i forget which bank it was it might have been bank of america but they they did 400 foreclosures that were um not illegal but they were accidental that was the way the the story was being explained you know error wow so people were getting evicted from their freaking homes and put on the street because of bank banking error but well you know that's that was then and this is now <laughs> and and america is still living off off of uh, um, the illusion that back in the day when things went this way this happened well those things have all been changed completely changed and they've been changed in in ways that you can't really fight them they've got way better weapons <laughs> i saw waco on i'm i saw waco on tv and i saw a videotape of it since then that broke it down and explained it and I, I understand why Cirque's afraid of going to America because of, you know, the uh, the reputation the country has for the violence. But people that I drink with down at the bar go to America for vacation. So here I am stuck in the middle. <laughs> and I, I got to be honest about um, traveling. I would never tell anybody don't go somewhere unless I'd been there personally and didn't like it and uh the advice i give them when they say california is just don't l try don't move there <laughs> it's a great place to visit for a bit but leave it <laughs> leave it behind you and come back and outside of that and yeah it's i don't know it was a nice place to be when i was growing up in it but when I was, how old was I? I left L.A. the last time in 2002, I think, and went to uh, North Carolina for a while. And I wasn't pleased with L.A. then. So, and I think since then, what I know of L.A. has gotten way worse than it was when I was there in two. So, I don't know. But we're all entitled to our opinions. You know, I'm not impressed by California because of its economy. And give a flying fuck about its economy. What I would like is to live in a place that uh, didn't have somebody always pestering you about rules and regulations every 20 minutes. That's really the, a nice thing about... Uh, not reading the Danish language too is sometimes I'm probably looking right at the sign that says no smoking while I'm smoking because <laughs> I, I really I think I resent um, other people telling me no you know <laughs> could be my upbringing though but I'm not one to tell people no so mm. It's a catch-22. But if you're already out drinking in a fucking bar, what is the big damn deal about cigarette smoke? You're already, I mean, you're already poisoning yourself with alcohol, you dumbass. Wise up. It's all garbage. Everything. Everything we do. And re I, Larry Woods taught me all that about the delivery of the electricity. And, well, he got me, you know... It, sent in the direction to, to explore it enough to understand how damaged we are by what's going on but that'll never yeah that won't change in my lifetime i don't i don't think so anyway i'd like to see it change but too many things would have to be 
uh, unprohibited. The inst- all this decriminalized so they can tax and regulate and charge and weigh and change and own. It's insane. They're talking, you know, the best thing on the planet is the freaking weed and everybody wants to fucking own it because it does so damn much. But, if you distract us with all this other shit, maybe we'll never bother to notice <laughs> and keep buying the second-rate shit delivered on the second-rate system because it makes them a lot of money. So, my opinion of it is greed will always outweigh common sense and we're going to live like this until we croak. And they do a good job at pitting us against each other too. Fuck. Man alive. Do we fight and argue about the most us just ignorant shit opinions about politics? If those things mattered, I think people would be doing something instead of just talking about the problem. They'd be talking about the answer. And I've offered my answer. Oh, Hannibal the cannibal wants to go. Hannibal, what you doing? No, oh, my dog came down to visit me. She's probably hurting because I haven't gone to bed yet. And let's see, what have I done here? Well, I did about an hour. Is that enough or should I try for two? Anybody bored of this crazy shit yet? Just saw the stupid commercial for that judge. Oy. See, I don't miss any of that. Wow. I, I guess, how do you explain that? Homesick. Um, hmm. America is a uh, one-of-a-kind place. And here's the weird thing. i got to take a, a brief moment here and let my animal out into the yard so she can do her business. And i got no musical interlude, so there's going to be like 30 seconds of dead air time. I'll be right back. This is going to rival the the shows I did with Vinny. Anyway, though, those were some fun things. Anyway, so we're... I was saying, ask my wife. Oh, I guess I, that she's sleeping. That's why the dog came down and let, let her out. Me and Hannibal... Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter is a very um, excitable dog. Are you? Oh, now she's out barking at the neighbors. Well, I might have to shut this down because i got a barking dog in the backyard now. But she doesn't usually come down. Oh, boy. Now I'm my wife and all. Well, I guess, uh, can I pause this and restart it or do I just shut it down and quit? Huh. Let us ponder. Well, I don't know. My wife hasn't screamed at me yet, so, um, I, no, I guess, being as you guys are just, just hang in there, I'll be right back.
Okay. Well, my dog is quiet, but she's still at large in the mean backyard in Freddy Town. Anyway, um, what's going on? Your bo- Rob's bored enough to listen to my crazy world stuff going on in Boring Town. Hmm. Fire up that bubbler. Good idea. I think I'll, I'll join you in that one. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, while I wait, no, I was just trying to take care of the dog. She was getting a little barky, and it's late at night here. It's 2 in the morning. And mm, I felt like getting up, you know, staying up and yakking on the radio for some odd reason. Really don't know why. But if you got nothing better to do, either do I. Because you can't keep the wife up when she needs her beauty sleep for the morning rituals. Oh, so I'm just not, no, I'm not, nobody's interested in, in my crazy shit anyway. Good, good, good. Elections are important because, uh, uh, because, hmm, elections are important because, I don't know, I never did understand why they're so fucking important. Nothing happens for anybody's benefit but a banker. A banker, a lawyer, maybe a doctor, you know, the educated guys, the ones that went to college and, you know, joined the special cults, those fuckers. I remember, I remember um, when I did need medical help. Oh, I know that, Rob. Fuck, please. I got the point that uh, I picked the night when people are more interested in in, uh, results. But you didn't read all that shit. I don't know how much fun you can have actually watching a bunch of, you know, inbred degenerates slap each other on the back for something they're paid to do. But that's... uh, I missed it. Oh, I missed missed it. That's just terrible. What am I going to do? You know, think about that. What am I going to do without uh, a country? You know what I mean? Is is my existence in, in life dependent on where I'm, you know, from for some reason? I'm, I don't know. I've had a lot of time to look at this from so many different angles that I never even would have thought of because I never thought of doing it. You know, it just kind of happened, and I went, hey, I could live here. (laughs) It makes, let's see, it makes you feel like you did something. Uh, I never, oh yeah, voting, sure. You know, I mean, if you're, if I'm in a gang of people that are on my side and back up what I believe, well then, sure, my ego and my esteem and power levels going to skyrocket but see to me that's kind of the easy pussy way out you know if you really want to live why don't you try telling those people to fly a fucking kite once in a while just to see where it'll go and now my dog is quiet i think she came in i'm going to take another pause Uh, i'm pretty sure that if grim doesn't mind he could probably edit the spaces out for me he's done it before me and Vinny had some real bad problems on a show but mr grim did his magic shit and clean it up i'll be back in 30 seconds
Well, that was close to 30 seconds on some planet. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> Trust number one. Steven Seagal looks like he ate Steven Seagal. Wow. Okay. I guess maybe he did. Maybe he's a clone. Maybe he's a robot. How are we doing with robots anyway? Let's see. Democrats are up by 60% in Columbus. Uh-oh. Is that? Oh, that's good for trust. He likes the Democrats. I like the Jews just to back the fuck out and leave us alone. But that wasn't going to happen, so I had to back out and leave you guys alone. But then I found radio. Now I can still pick at the scab. You know, Rob knows how I mean it, I think. Give me a hallelujah, Mr. Rob Works of the Bubbler. Yeah, Rob is of the Bubbler family. That's his crest is a bong. <laughs> I like all these aliases, too. They're way more interesting than our um, slave names that they give us on the birth certificate. The birth certificate, you know, the paper that owns you, makes you, uh, I don't know, makes you a property of a bigger thing so that you're not all alone fighting a dragon by yourself. But in the long run, you'd be better off alone fighting a dragon by yourself. But most people seem to be satisfied with society. I think it's a failed, horrible waste. I, I don't see the, I don't see the good side of it at all. It's just crowd, uh, overcrowded, greedy cesspool of lying thieves that take advantage of people that uh, are basically honest. But that's my opinion. And so far, I don't think nobody agrees with that one. <laughs> I don't think Mary agrees with that, with me on much of the the way that I I interpret the internet world that I read on a semi daily basis. <clears throat> Didn't Russia name him as a ambassador or something? Who I don't know. He's a piece of shit. Really? Oh, wait a minute. Who are they talking about now? Who is it? Da -da 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 -da. I don't know. I liked his movies when I was a teenager, but as an adult, I've grown to realize what a dick Seagal is. Oh, and that he can't fight. Oh, choreography. Wow. Huh. Wow. See, it's all that celebrity stuff. It's, it, to me, it seems like it's all rigged from the beginning so that you'll, you'll like it and then you won't like it and then they'll give you a reason to like it again and then they'll give you a reason to not like it. Like fishing, you know, they send out their, uh, their bait and they see how many people are going to nibble at it and then they sell shit. <laughs> And, and the content and the of what they sell, well, not sell now. So well, yeah, today it's continued anyway. But from the way it started was so uh, over the top and dramatic that it's hard to believe doing it that way convinced anybody that they weren't just doing a skit to get a laugh. I mean, if you've never seen what what is it called, Reefer Madness? It is the most ridiculous um, explanation of what happens when you smoke pot I've ever seen. But it managed to uh, make cannabis illegal. <laughs> and hemp, too. Because it was a relative of the evil cannabis plant. So what? how they managed to just wipe history out like it never happened before and just create this new history at one point in, in uh, America you could buy these things over the counter in retail outlets at one point in history that was you had to have so much of your acreage for hemp 
and all these things got erased. So if they could erase that and convince people that hemp and pot are bad for you and do all the damage they've done in the last, what, 80 years or so with that story, how many other stories are there that are worse than than that? Banking and uh, medicine. Oh, I guess they're all bad. Mm. But the good side is you guys will just vote somebody into power that will magically erase all these things and fix them, right? I've been waiting for that for 40 years, and I'm I'm about out of patience. I'm, I'm waiting for a, cha- a positive change, and all I see is what people call a positive change now is recreational cannabis is legal in 12 states, and they call that progress because now it's it's legal mommy and daddy will let you do it of course only if you stay in your room and you don't do it between two in the morning and eight in the morning and you got to wear your pink shirt when you're doing it (laughs) you have to have the certified government regulated dosage of cannabis or of course you're breaking a law for crying out loud and and it's just see how do you how do you convince people that something you can grow in a pot in your backyard or in your house is so complicated you know and and out of reach that you need government approval to to have it (laughs) And they all suck. <laughs> Mr. Mister Rob Works. He is the guy that coined the phrase, yes, folks, Rob Works. And they all suck. And I tend to agree with him. I can't, I can't find a hero in this whole, this whole group. And the, the folks that I would consider heroes were gobbled up and stolen from and buried alive by the the very thing you guys are voting to keep alive <laughs> it's the most evil government of any kind in, in any country at this time in history is the very thing that that's trying to to make you miserable <laughs> but they don't tell you that this is a beautiful sales pitch they they promise you the fucking moon I mean, jeez, you're going to have a home of the free, you're going to be the envy of the world, but if you don't have that special uh, ID card, you can't fly. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we get to tax the fuck out of it. We didn't leave, did I leave that out, Rob? I'm sorry. It's just like Moose says, you know, some of this stuff is just... It's not that it's been burned out. It's just that it, it there's so much shit that you can't even pick something to uh, defend or fight for or stand up for or boycott because it's all bullshit. Yep, there's nothing. Nothing is got a value anymore. It's all insane. I uh, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. You know, I don't want to steal from you and and you know claim it as my own so i i want to make sure i did it my way that your words so yeah you have a little of your own (laughs) ah you gotta be here in the chat to really appreciate this one i suppose but i ran into rob works here on the rln and he did a little radio he had eddie craig on guy knows his shit about traffic law and see that that's what the need the the need to have your your society explained to you in the simple terms you can understand in itself should be the warning that you need you're playing out of your field you know the minute somebody indicates that you need a lawyer why what could you have possibly have done <laughs> <laughs> but the these educated people they found ways to make us believe shit that's just not fucking true 
and when it's not true, then they bring in the cops with the guns and the tanks to make it so, number one. <laughs> so that the next guy won't resist. <coughs> now that's more than just opinion. That concept has been written about time and again, way before I ever came around, before I was born, during wars that happened a long, long time ago, and in many languages, you know. And then they got the nerve to tell us crap like, oh, to the winner go the spoils. You know, and then when you think about that, w what does that really mean? Oh, they're going to make a billionaire out of some guy, and he's going to have a big piece of property with a big shed on it with lots of stuff in it rotting because he doesn't want to sell it because they don't meet his price and you know to the winner go the spoil so he'll have his food but because somebody won't meet his price he'll just let it rot and that's what we are in the long run and all this information right here, aquaponics, there's a guy in Nebraska, an old farmer, that has an underground garden. He actually has it enclosed, and he heats it with pipes and shit, but he uses the earth as a source of heat. Videotaped it, put it on the internet, it is brilliant. Grows so much food per year, his his plants... Uh, do this, that, and the other, and they know what to expect out of it and how to replant it. It's really brilliant. So all this world hunger, and it's just the lack of knowledge that people have about reality because reality is not how much you make and how much, how big your house is. That's your reality. The reality that's everybody's reality is the wavelength that the electricity is delivered to your house on if you have a house if you have electricity you know the quality of that fucking gas that you buy at the gas station so you can get you you know you drive yourself around and, and do your thing whatever your thing is because see people like to have a thing and i when i was younger i I did enjoy that. I drove many, many cars, many, many miles. But as I got older and started taking the, the gasoline thing more seriously in a way that was comfortable for me, I finally gave up driving. I haven't even ridden in a car since 2014. I have completely no buses, no trains, nowhere. Just said fuck it you know um there's enough people out there rushing around and hustling to copenhagen and going to freetown and i've done all that so i thought well what's the point of continuing that why not just enjoy what i've got around me that i can see every day and manage to fall into the, that kind of thinking i don't know easily satisfied <laughs> maybe I guess it's just a matter of uh, taste you know because I can go out into the backyard and find four hours of things to do and think I'm going out there for 20 minutes but luckily for me lately the heat has been just exhausting so I get to be a slug because <laughs> it's too hot it's too hot to work an old man out there in the heat so I've been taking advantage of that and uh, being a slug. I I don't know what else in the world to call that. And enjoying every freaking minute of it. And I think so did Cirque because she could have had to gone had to been going to her job during that weather, and that wouldn't have been very comfortable for her. So see, whatever it is that that we live by or however you look at that it saw fit to put her at home through the time where it would be uncomfortable to travel <laughs> people were were going from Denmark down to Spain to cool off it was so warm here for like a week and it's going to be hot tomorrow too when I get up tomorrow it's going to hit in 4 o'clock in the afternoon it's going to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit in 
Cop in Denmark, which is relatively warm. But it, it doesn't get that hot until like four in the afternoon and lasts for maybe about two hours. Then psh, cools off again. So step away from the ginseng. I'm I don't have any ginseng. I guess I could go buy some. Oh yeah, I read about that Missouri couple, Miss Kate. That was a piece of work. They were an older couple and they got arrested for illegally selling the product not because the product's illegal but their method of sale was not within the the confines of their freedom or some shit yeah 77 and 73 yeah unbelievable but hey only in the land of the home and the free and stuff like that <clears throat> It's like this Hillary thing, you know, and I was telling Cirque earlier today, we're looking at the internet and hill dogs all over the internet still. And I told her, I think that the real hill dog got sick during the uh, uh, selection process and Hillary got ill and they had to put Trump in there because Hill can't do it. And if you'll notice the lack of, uh, Where's she been for the last year? All you see is all kinds of memes and little jokes about her, but no, you don't see her on talk shows. You don't see her. On, do you see her on Twitter? I don't Twitter, so I might be wrong about this, of course, because I've been wrong once or twice before. But yeah, I I've come to believe that they originally planned to put her in there, but she got ill, and instead of copping that she's ill. They put Trump in and made uh, a big chase. We're going to get her and put her in prison. And they're going to drag that on for five or ten years. But Hill Dog's done. And if she's not, what's she doing? Because that woman dangerous. That She was in charge. I, they did a thing about Waco to, uh, to Im implicate the FBI and uh, the ATF. Not and not blame the White House for calling the shots on that. That was rogue. Rogue police did that by God and country. And of course, the reality of it is those people were all under orders. And when they were finished, they took shots like they do in war. You know, standing over their kill. So now nah, that that was that was the your government hard at work. Well, my government too, if you count me on paper. But I neither support it. Nor do I vote for it. So I don't know. How can I be an American if I don't want any of the American shit? I don't even buy anything American. I owned stuff that was American because I brought it from America to Scotland and some things from there to here. But there's no American stores here in Freddy Town. <laughs> I can't think of an American product. I haven't seen anything. I think I'll look for, I'll start taking my camera to the store. Take some pictures. Pictures are the, that's the proof that you need to, to find out what you're looking for in this life. Failure to remain within the confines of their freedom. That's, ex and that's, it's a class B misdemeanor. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, this, this legal system shit is it's it here it's at fuck i would i wouldn't want to deal with it bunch of admiralty court fucking lawyers just skinning people alive now here their their systems a lot different though they're they're not as uh they're not as inclined to push for incarceration and you know long long prison terms for your marijuana law-breaking fucking people yeah they you know they try to fix them and they they know the truth there's nothing wrong with smoking weed it's just against the fucking law see there's drinking alcohol is not against the law but you name one good fucking thing that comes out of drinking alcohol unless you keep it to a minimum i mean if, if you let the drink take you you can, you know, you can end up in bed with a ham sandwich, you know, and five people laughing at you. 
she looked all of 18, I swear, Your Honor. <laughs> you know, it was a ham sandwich. Anyway, I myself avoid being that drunk, but I have seen its effects on many people. <laughs> Uh, which is why I lean to the uh, the green shit because I don't tend to end up with ham sandwiches at four in the morning when I smoke. <laughs> but, but if I drink, it's probably possible because drinking does that. It makes you forget. <laughs> Where I think uh, what the green does to my short-term memory is incidental it never amounts to anything as i smoke it and eat it and whatnot drink it in my cocoa occasionally because i think they you know i've said this a hundred thousand times i think that people and media and film and music and all these other things they've overplayed uh, what pot actually does and made it sound like things it's not. 62%! Is that the Democrats? I don't know. I would assume because Antis, uh, I think he's for the Democrats. He either is one or he's for him or I don't know. Does it really matter? You're going to get whipped by the same belt so... I mean, you know, going first or second, what the fuck difference does it make? Get it done. <laughs> Get it over with. <laughs> but I got to say, well, because I'm a smart ass mostly, is um, I don't, I still can't see anything good that comes out of political bullshit. It's all, it always turns against us in the end. And eight eight people end up in court for some you know, corruption scandal and and nothing gets done. Just more scandals and more dead people. But maybe that's the best we can do. Ooh, that would be a horrible thought. I think as a collective it probably is. You know. The individual gets lost in the group in the masses and then they they choose people to uh, to celebrate like Edison, you know. Or who else? Another piece of shit there. Henry Ford. You know. I mean. Okay. Henry Ford's ideas. Made him a wealthy fucking guy. Beyond anything that. You can't even explain this kind of wealth to other people. It It's beyond your imagination. What that guy accomplished. Because. Of course. He had bankers behind him to finance it. <laughs> and they were using Monopoly money to do it. <laughs> and and here we are. Still. <laughs> still doing the same thing. And wondering why things are so bad. I, I don't understand why the... The voting public doesn't understand the game is the problem. It's got nothing to do with the guy that sits in the chair. The chair is the problem. <laughs> and we've been, uh, I think we've been manipulated into believing shit that's absolutely not fucking true. And if you go against it, well, you end up... Uh, not very popular with people I'd say that's the first thing your your credibility in, in society goes <whistles> takes a plunge because there are requirements to live in society and if you don't meet them well then what are you <laughs> you're an illegal alien <laughs> and I don't know that would be kind of funny to be thought of as uh, an illegal alien because I've always been so welcome where I go, except Kirkwall was a little strict. That place was uh, a little more inbred than any place I'd ever seen. But yeah, I managed to make friends with other outsiders from other places that were um, there for family reasons like I was. But 
Denmark. Wow, what a what a shift. A nice place. This is like uh, California in 1972. You know, when I was a little kid, and I could get out on the damn side of the road, and if I wanted to go go to Downey to go see the theater, I could th- stick my thumb out and hitchhike there. I don't know what was it up Lakewood Boulevard, a couple of miles from my my mom and dad's house. I don't know, maybe five miles total. And I would um, either ride my bike or get out there and hitchhike a ride, go to the movie theater and go watch a film. And now if you try to do that, I don't think people would, I think some cop would probably stop you first before anything and want to see your papers and make sure you weren't a threat to society. So I, that's where I'm at is I'm looking at, I grew up in a place where, you know, people had lives and did shit and now i'm looking at a place where every time you turn around they want to give you a another id that you have to use to to do this or to do that you need a special you know card for this card for that and it's just a control we we live in control and if there's nothing we can really do about it and I think it's just gotten so big, it's so out of control, and it can't be managed. You would expect it to collapse at some point, but remember 2008, you know, GM crashed. What did they do? <laughs> they propped it back up. <laughs> they printed more money. <laughs> wow. So with, hmm, how, don't even know how to explain it. So to me. I, like I've said a hundred and fifty thousand times, it's just all a big. It's like a big game, like a joke, to take this seriously. At this point in my life, is it's ridiculous. It would be a waste of my energy. I might as well start being concerned with who the president is. Yeah, I'm not could care less if it was Hillary or if it was Trump. It didn't matter. It was going to. Syria was still going to get fucked in the ass no matter who is sitting in that White House. Because the people that decide it are not the people you think they are. <laughs> Rob's got an idea who those people are. And Grimner, Anti, Trust No One, Miss Kate. Who else is hanging around here on the chat? Wanna Taco. You guys all know. I'm not alone. You know, I'm not alone in in some truths that we all know. But, hey, well, I don't know. I just got stoned and figured I'd chitter-chatter for a while. Grim's always saying there's nobody was doing any radio. So I figured uh, instead of rehashing the news and, you know, reading other people's work, I just bullshit about what's going on, how I feel about life. You know, be a grumpy old man. I got a birthday coming up too. At first it's Mary, then it's Grimner, and then it's Beth Z, and then I th- I'm after Beth Z. I think I don't know if there's anybody else coming up in August and September beside us. But Mary just had a birthday on Friday, I believe it was. She turned 39 again, so she's like 117. Don't tell her I said that. She might get a little pissy. Maybe ah, she'll never listen to the show. So <laughs> I got Miss Mary. Hey, I kind of looking forward to uh, doing the Saturday Dork Table with uh, Mary again. That'll be a lot of fun. I don't get along with too many people on the internet. It's the way that I get along with Miss Mary on the internet, but still cracks me up to this day but anyway we have what we want and we have what we got i went to sleep on twumpy's night woke up next day and found out this probably be the same mr anti is talking about his uh election yeah well mm, you know if you think about all that shit if you don't vote there they'll vote for you and uh, appoint someone so doesn't that indicate something is amiss somewhere in <laughs> the voting system? <laughs> They're prepared. All right. If you're prepared for that, then what difference does it make what the vote is? I think it's just a matter of manipulating the outcome to look a certain way 
to meet a certain criteria. I don't know any other words to use for it, but nothing good ever comes out of any of this crap. You'll all be going, oh, they picked the wrong guy. Eh. Well, see, there you go. You mean election night when he stole the... Ah, uh, you don't... Uh, these are appointments. These people, they're actors on a stage. They're reading scripts. And you're getting fluoridated in <laughs> shitty medical, <laughs> second-rate electricity. You're burning coal, <laughs> burning oil. And all these things were made, they were they were man-made to replace the thing that worked. And I don't know why that's not common knowledge by now so we could change this. And if enough people said no, then guess what the fucking people that make shit would have to do? They would have to meet our demands, but there's no unity amongst people because they don't know anything for the most of it. So we're stuck with... <laughs> we're stuck with second rate crap that doesn't work good <laughs> oh wow oh kate's giving old j dread some attention about trump's uh success the the selection and i'm still good i'm nah. i'm not convinced i don't i don't believe any of this crap i think it's all a bunch of horseshit so he made a liar out of me more than once, says Chloe. I don't know who she's talking about, but it felt good to read it out loud. Just having fun, Chloe. I ain't picking on anybody. I think voters of both sides are equally insane. If you vote for Trump, you're a madman. If you vote for Obama, you're a mad woman. All the same crap. They all kill people. And that's the end result. So... I don't really care how you get to your end result. There's no way to justify this. But, mm, you know, I guess you can justify it. I can't justify it enough to not want to live in the country anymore. I mean, that did, this didn't start out this way, but that's where it went, you know. I'm following my emotional roller coaster through life. <laughs> And mine's just kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, said he'd never get through a primary, much less the general election. <laughs> well, he's been the, he's been sitting in the White House for about like a year and a half now. You lucky fuckers! <laughs> wow. I don't know. I've seen people of all ages over here, and some of them actually like Trump. And some of them actually don't. So, based on what? I don't fucking know. How do you, how do you have a, a judgment about a government official from another country that you've never been to? <laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting, but. Oh, they're chitter-chattering on the RLM about the selection in progress. And I'm just, I don't know, having a giggle. I thought I'd get on here and, you know, misinform the RLM audience and the Spreaker people and let them hear the other side and figure it out for themselves. Because, you know, the one thing we know is we don't all agree, but the things that we don't all agree about are as useless as tits on bacon. I'm tell we, we argue about the most pointless, useless shit. And that is probably exactly where we're supposed to be. Because if we're fighting about something, we're never going to find an answer to the problem. And that's the game. In a nutshell, if, you know, that's the way I see it. Maybe you see it differently. I suggest that you get on to the RLM and open a cat podcast and tell us about it. <laughs> but it's, it's hard to do this. Mm. 
I'm going to try for the whole two. I got 20 minutes and I make a full show like a grown up. <laughs> Last time I got a little, um, I don't know, what was it? Mm, Self conscious, I think. And because it really is a lot like just sitting here talking to myself. But I can read the chat and tell that, you know, you guys are doing one thing and and then there's the delay. But I had Rob asking me some important questions about the world at large earlier. <laughs> like, you know, do they, how much is the fine if you smoke in? I don't know. But if I ever find out, I'll be sure to tell you. Going against the grain is, uh, it's an art form, I think. You know, there's a way to go against the grain, too, where the appearance doesn't always translate that you're going against anything. Sometimes it's kind of expected of you, you know, like this, uh, this election hoopla. You guys are all, what, what is going to change? How long does it, so the, the guy that's sitting in the chair gets up and the new guy comes in and sits down in the chair. Now, how long is it going to take him before he actually does something sitting in that chair? What, a year, two years, three, four years? And then how long does it take for the system to actually take what he wrote and do anything physical with it? it so... Nah, this is all a bunch of bullshit. We're just being screwed. They're playing musical chairs with their relatives and close friends of the family. And here we are, drinking fluoridated water and eating GMOs like a bunch of lab rats. And thanking them for doing it. Hey, thank you for the Rockefeller medicine. That was wonderful. Can I get another inoculation? My left cheek still has feeling in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. But where are we going to go? I don't I don't know if I can do let's see. What can I I got to think of something intelligent to say about something. And I'm just <laughs> I'm just thinking of all, all the disappointment that comes out of voting. <laughs> You know, you hear people complain. Well, except for the winners. And, and the weird thing is the only thing you won is the name of the guy that you wanted is going to sit in the seat that's going to fuck you. <laughs> so, I, I, mm, please tell me what is the allure of this voting fucking nightmare? I do not understand it. Even if your guy gets in you still end up with nothing. So, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I guess this explains why I'm so popular with my peers on the RLM. <laughs> because I, I really cannot know. No, I ain't taking it serious. It doesn't affect me. How do you explain that? I guess I could give that a whirl. That could take a few minutes. Um, the only time that society actually affects me is at the end of a threat. Other than that, it's just a, it's just an activity. It's something to do. Um, it's not an obstacle or a challenge or anything like that. It's, you know, the difference between uh, walking from here, pick a destination and go to it and do a few interactions along the way and then return. And with a life that simple, it's really hard to fuck up and, and do something that's going to cause you any trouble. And that's... And, but it's it's not the excitement, you know, the excitement of living in the city where anything can happen and you're out drinking until three in the morning with all kinds of crazy people yelling and screaming and punching each other and all that kind of crap. But I did that for a while and now I don't do that. Well, I didn't do it, but I've 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 
what, what I was more just a watcher. I like to watch the people act up. Enjoy my buzz. Maybe um, play some video games or gamble or something. But to actually get involved in a in an argument or a fight, it never occurred to me. Not in, jeez, how many years? Is, it's been a lot of years. I'm an now. I'm like a what? Fuck! I'm an old retired bad guy because I survived my bad guy days and made it to adulthood. Then now look at me. <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't know what... Maybe there's a category that I could start. Maybe I've got peers all over the world. I just don't know it. Put out a APB for fellow Americans that gave up on their home country. And, uh, <laughs> and it doesn't even fucking matter. I mean, what difference would it have made if I would have voted for... For Hillary, I mean, one of those absentee ballots, she lost anyway. So, and what difference would it have made if I would have voted for Trump? He won. I really doubt my one vote would have tilted anything. So that story is kind of stupid. Because you got, like, states that... <laughs> it, it's a joke. Come on, you guys. It Does it get... How does it get any more um, comical... And I don't know, bloated and ridiculous than what what we're actually seeing is you get people that have absolutely no fucking clue what they're talking about. Look at the Congress and listen to some of their little speeches, and then they try to pass it off as comedy when these people are very um, what would the right word be? They're either reading scripts that make them look stupid, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> or they're off their fucking rock and they're stupid because intelligent people do not vote to put fluoride in your drinking water to help your teeth. Honest people don't sell it to you as good for you. <laughs> so... What more? I don't know. I, I've done this. That particular line doesn't ever get anybody's attention. I usually get ignored. Or right about when I try to tell you that if we didn't live in a dishonest world and where people were constantly trying to figure out ways to fuck everybody else, we wouldn't be where we are. But that's the way it's portrayed that's the way things seem to be done at the highest levels of finance and government is everybody's a lying fucking thief and here we are just surviving you know, trying to be comfortable to some some level i mean it's not uh it's not a bad life that we have it's just not uh caviar and and what's that caviar and champagne every day but I don't think I, I'd want that any damn way. But what we have is comfort, you know. And I guess being comfortable might might make a person less concerned about uh, politics. And uh, whether or not they put fluoride in the water in Flint, Michigan or raw sewage. You know, that's Flint, Michigan. Who gives a fuck? I don't live in Flint, Michigan. And that's what I saw. You know, instead of a, a system that, hey, we have a problem, holy shit, the water's poisoned, let's fix it. What I saw was uh, a lot of people dodging and blaming and explaining, but it's legal. <laughs> it's not ethical and it's not moral. But the guys in the suits, they thought this through and they sat down and when they made their guidelines, they made sure that these were the guidelines. What you're doing now is what was foreseen, and we were prepared for the lawsuits. <laughs> and here we are. I haven't heard much about Flint, Michigan lately. It was a big thing in the on the interweb for a minute. But there's so many things. To, good geez. What was it? Let's see. Mass shootings. What else have you got? <laughs> Mass, mass shootings. <laughs> I seen a video about uh, a mass shooting that turned out to be 
uh, government propaganda. And it's legal for the government in the country I'm from to make propaganda and try to persuade you to, to bend your point of view based on this event that was really just a, a performance to get you to see things their way. <laughs> but Obama was a smooth talker and shit, but he didn't get me with that nonsense, you know. We do this for your own good so you'll understand. Fuck you and your fucking ass. These people want you to fight each other. Okay? That's what they want. The government that you're voting for. <laughs> the, the very people that you're depending on for your future are the very people that are making your present uncomfortable. <laughs> well, if it's not uncomfortable, then... This conversation doesn't apply to you. <laughs> ah, from Denmark to Ohio, how government solutions viciously spiral into bigger problems. I smoke a doobie and go to the polls. Get a free sticker. I good if that's what gets you gets your kicks. It's just the illusion that it does anything is I grew well beyond all that many years ago and I've been watching the passing parade ever since and the, the only constant in this game is that it constantly gets worse and the people that replace the other people are more disgusting than the people they replaced time after time after time but you guys keep voting for them and I wouldn't vote for either of them there you go that's my thing on politics, because I think politics is just a way to control you so that you'll do what you're told, period. And it doesn't matter who you are. It just matters that you just do what you're told like a good little sheep. And with that, I'm going to say good... N well, I'm going to start to shuffle down. I'll try to make it to the to the two-hour mark on my show program here we've been trying to do a dark table solo again i don't know if it if it worked but saturdays it didn't seem to be too awful bad so i thought i'd try another one and uh this week uh we got wednesday i think that's tomorrow uh well my my t that's my today but when wednesday you got mary coming on on her rocket chair i think it's uh seven o'clock eastern time it might be six o'clock well i'm not sure because i'm usually sleeping by that time of night anyway because we're a little bit later than you <laughs> then uh, <coughs> there's nothing on thursday for your listening pleasure but then friday maybe we Vinny came back on on line today so we'll probably get uh Vinny might do something on Friday. He hasn't announced it yet, but I would venture to guess. And then if he doesn't, you got Grimner and Miss Moose on the Freakers Ball on Friday night. And uh, that's about it. Oh, Vinny's going to do a dark table with me on Saturday. So I won't be having to do this stuff all by my little lonesome. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's very difficult to to stay on um i don't know what the right thing is stay on uh, like one point my mind wanders jumping in and out of ideas like i was changing shoes and uh maybe maybe not <laughs> anyway so i think i'll wrap this up i like to thank you guys for uh playing with me tonight on the rlm and I figured i'd give this dork table in the uh during the week is shot because nobody else was doing anything. If anybody, if there's any traffic on it, I'll try it again next week. Thank you, and Roger Wilco over and out.